Hi there, this is Kate Robbins. I am a life transition coach. I work under the umbrella of Clarity Council. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm here to speak about uh, resistance to responsibility. And I'm gonna go over a few ways which this shows up in our life um, and ways that you can utilize certain techniques consistently with all of your relationships so that you can find more peace in those dynamics. Okay, so I'll get right in here. Um, I want to share with you first that the work that I do in the world uh, with men and women, they come to me uh, to support them through life transitions. So these can often feel challenging and present difficulties. And so I work to provide uh, consistent support uh, through energetic techniques and practical action steps to allow people to find more um, ease through these transitions. So with that said, we'll start with our uh, conversation for today. Again, resistance to responsibility. So one of the most obvious ways that this shows up in our life is um, in uh, power dynamics and relationships. It's, it's really a, an issue about control. And so as we work to find control in a situation or the person that uh, is, we're relating to is working to find control in a situation, then energies can start to ramp up and get more intensified and then resistance uh, can present itself. So uh, my technique, which is very basic, is how can we get from that resistance to a sense of responsibility or the ability to respond. And this is how we do it. So first of all, I'm gonna use a really simple example. Uh, I'm a homeschooling mom, and uh, at times there's this resistance to uh, uh, doing homeschooling or chores with my son. Um, and just for context, he's 12 years old. So we've been doing this for years, uh, homeschooling, and then of course incorporating more chores. And um, what I notice is that um, because control is a first chakra issue, it can be very um, uh, intensified with like a sense of um, uh, uh, like the control gets to be very um, like base and core. It's our first chakra. So it, it relates to feelings of safety. So if someone doesn't feel safe and they're trying to find control, uh, they will act out with resistance. So with our um, homeschooling dynamic, I present what we're going to do for the day and then it's often met with resistance. And how I get through that is reminding my son that um, the responsibilities that he takes on also allow him more freedoms. Right, so as he's aged, he's had the ability to, um, what I call free range, many parents are experimenting with this again, it's how I grew up, where he gets the ability to move out into the world at his uh, pace and, and, and where he would like to be. And I also then, um, in giving them freedom, expect certain responsibilities to be um, also taken on. So it looks like, Again, with more of this freedom, there is more responsibility, and that, when I vocalize it with him, looks like teamwork. I, I say Team Robbins, you know, and uh, we really look at how we're supporting each other so that I have more free time to do the things that I need to do by allowing him to take on the responsibility of chores, or um, as he educate is educated and grows, he can start to begin um, having more freedom in the world and more ability to stretch out and do the things that he loves to do. That technique seems to have worked really well. So as we um, move along in um, the aging process, uh, working with teens, um, this is something I've noticed coming up throughout this um, coronavirus experience um, where I live. Uh, in California has been put on a, um, a shelter in place uh, order. And so what we're dealing with is teenagers and early um, young adults in their 20s uh, dealing with this struggle to um, 
stay in and follow this order, right? It's not necessarily their parents that are saying it. A lot of them are living on their own at this point, and if not, if they're with their parents, it's it's a challenge to, to keep them where we need them to be. So what I do, again, when I'm recommending to parents speaking to their teens, is really set up a scenario in which the teen realizes that the, the resistance that's coming up is about control for them. And there's another way for them to find control in this situation if they're feeling um, like things are out of control. And one of those ways is to create um, a sense of global responsibility. <coughs> so global responsibility and, 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 and then allowing that to sort of trickle down even to sort of the national responsibility and um, the local community responsibility and then the responsibility for the family or whoever it is that they're, they're living with at the time. What we're looking to do here is to create a sense of knowing that's bigger than self, right? So that they can begin to see, okay, I'm able to respond in a way that is showing up not just for myself, but for others and protecting others that may have um, compromised immune systems or um, be at risk in another way. And the more that we can allow them to understand that this is not forever, this is just this short period of time, and that um, educating them about how what the responsibilities are and why, that empowers them to make a more um, uh, enlightened choice, right? Rather than the neurotic choice of, of, well, hey, I've got time off, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, right? So very, very important to help them understand like how these things relate, how they're actions relate to um, the results of their actions, right? So they, they, are, they find that there's consequences, logical, natural consequences that arise as a result of their actions, and they are empowered to choose differently. Okay, so those are two examples working with young minds and young adults, and now we'll talk about how that all works in relationship where um, we may be in the sheltered in experience struggling with uh, the dynamics in our relationships that are always underlying, they're always there, but they're in, um, enhanced right now, they're um, uh, exacerbated, right? So with the conditions as they are, we're all sheltering in place, we know as adults that we're doing it to take care of one another um, and our local community and, and beyond. Um, so we have that, we get that, right? And I mean, of course, I'm still hearing um, uh, some resistance uh, from adults wondering, you know, we get, we can certainly get um, frustrated with how our government is responding or um, how uh, there may be underlying uh, uh, issues at hand that aren't being seen because of the distraction of the coronavirus. So those are separate issues to be addressed. Today I'm focusing on how we can create a more uh, healthful dynamic in our interpersonal uh, relationships. So that being said, um, with adults it's really about setting boundaries and maintaining those boundaries, right? So um, the first thing that needs to happen when we're uh, setting boundaries is to know what our own boundaries are. Like what works for me, what doesn't work for me? How am I feeling when this situation arises? So it's a lot of internal work to start with and then we can begin to share those um, uh, those thoughts, those feelings, those um, uh sensations that are arising, right? Because sometimes we have physical sensations that are arising and we feel like, again, this lack of control, there's this compression that happens and we're seeking to find that control outside of ourselves when at first we really need to go within and, and touch into what you're perceiving so that you can begin to share it and ask for support from your, um, your family, your partner, your friends, whatever, whoever it is that you can talk to. Okay, so... Conscious communication. This is this is what it's all about. Okay, so there's an enlightened and a neurotic side to communication. We're going to talk about the enlightened side today. It always starts with compassion. So, the ideal scenario is that both people are in touch with their own personal um, experience and then are able to communicate that. So, one way to uh, 
really start that communication process is just saying, I feel this when this happens. So we go right back to nonviolent communication um, and we say, when this arises, I feel this way, right? And without blame or shame, we get to really express ourselves fully and then the next step to that expression comes from the partner, right? Or the person you're relating to. That looks like deep listening. So first of all, you start with deep listening for yourself. Then once you're able to express how you're feeling or what you're thinking or what's physically going on for you, then it is the responsibility of the listener to do the listening. Not just listen to respond, but listen to really hear what's going on for the other person. Okay, so it's a practice. It's a dynamic. It, it, it's something that will you'll get better and better at as you progress. The deep listening is all about receiving. So open your ears, let go of distractions, listen deeply, and then that's where the compassion comes in. So we compassionately listen, and then the next step is to reflect what you've heard. What have you heard? How can you, with your words, reflect to the person who just expressed themselves what it is that you heard them say? And then allow them to have the response of like, yes, that was it, or no, that quite wasn't it, or wasn't quite it, right? And let them re-express themselves in a way, hopefully differently, so that you can hear it better. You can hear it more efficiently and effectively. Okay, so once we get through the deep listening, what we start to feel is... Um, a, a deeper sense of connection because you've you've reflected what you've heard, you've connected on what's going on for that one specific person. If you have things coming up, set those aside for now. You're doing the listening, right? And so you set those aside for now and you will come back to them. You will use the same process to get to what's going on for you. So once you've reflected, this is that point, right? Where you get to make an agreement. You come to an agreement together. Okay, so it might sound like this. I am feeling um, really scared about the current uh, global situation. And it creates this tension in my body. It um, feels very um, like I'm being squeezed in and I can't barely breathe. Okay, so that's person A. Person B was doing the deep listening. Okay, I'm, I'm hearing from you that... Um, that the pressure is really great on you right now because of what's happening globally with the coronavirus and that it's almost hard for you to breathe and that you're sharing this with me to seek my support. Is that correct? And then the person can say yes or no and you revisit that and you go back and forth until you feel completely heard, person A, and person B, you feel like you've really heard and feel connected to person A. Okay, from there, the agreement happens. So it might look like this. Person A says, I am really needing support at specific times in the day. Namely, when I go to sleep at night, my mind starts spinning and I'm, um, I'm tossing and turning and I'm unable to sleep. Person B, okay, I hear that you're having a hard time getting to sleep at night because of the your mind's running and you're feeling anxiety. What can I do to support you at that time? Uh, person A goes back and says, you know, I think it would feel really good just to be held. Or maybe we could listen to a, a, a meditation together as we go to sleep. Person B, oh, that sounds lovely. I would like to do that too. Or, gosh, that I don't really think I could listen to something as we go to sleep. I can hold you. Could you put earbuds in to listen to something as we go to sleep? It, see how it See how it works so you can negotiate what does work for you and what doesn't. It doesn't just have to be, yes, I can do that, person A. Person B can say, okay, I, I hear you and that doesn't quite work for me, but this is what does, okay? So from there, you come to a mutual agreement. Once you're in that place, it feels really good, by the way, once you're in that place for the agreement, that's the, that's the boundary, that's the, the setting healthy limits, right? And then asking for what you need for support, okay? And once you get to that place, I feel like th that embodies conscious communication and then you practice the agreement. You practice the agreement. So it doesn't happen overnight because you, you forget. You've had a conversation. It was very meaningful. And at some point, you know, you're going to bed and you completely forgot your agreement. Person B is like, 
just off and scrolling on their phone like they used to and person A is sitting there like frustrated or having emotions arise that could be triggering anger because again we're at the control first chakra right so in this dynamic you're going to both have to work hard at staying open to reminders about the agreement so person a can say i'm hoping that you can remember that we had an agreement about our bedtime especially during this um challenging uh crisis uh can you a turn off turn off your phone in a few minutes and then we can work on that like snuggling and um i can put my earbuds in and we can we, i can do my listening and we can find our quiet together and the person b can say oh, thank you so much for the gentle reminder right we don't want to dig in at each other we want to practice compassionate conscious communication reminding each other gently of your agreement okay so this is a technique that again we all we all forget we all make mistakes we gently and lovingly remind each other we come back to our agreement and then again if person b had something that they need to share you do the whole same technique same technique going through it okay so that looks like again just to be super clear person a is expressing what it is that they're feeling uh, person b is deeply listening person b reflects what has heard from person a until they've come to uh, the place of, of feeling one another, feeling that connection, right? And then person A and B together come up with an agreement that they can utilize moving forward to support person A, okay? So that's how it looks. So this is essentially what I do as a parent with my homeschooling child. I compassionately listen, deeply listen to what his pain point is. Then I offer solutions like, you know, just, just to bring this all back around, I know that chores and homeschooling are not fun. There's things that I do as an adult that aren't that fun either, but I do them because it's it's how I take care of our, our team, Team Robbins. So can we agree to do 30 minutes of homeschooling, um, 20 minutes of, of um, playing a fun game, uh, another 30 minutes of chores, and then uh, another 20 minutes of, um, you know, we can make lunch together, whatever it is. So you split it up and you create um, a, a, an agreement that works for the child that they can agree to. And then when they fall out of their agreement with you, you remind them, remember how... Um, you enjoy your freedoms, right? There's so many fun things that you love to do. And as older you get, the more freedoms you have. Yeah, I really like going out on walks by myself and, you know, going to the, the corner market and getting some fun stuff for myself. And yeah, well, that, that remember that that links to the responsibility of our, of our team, of our family. So we really need to take care of these responsibilities before we can have those freedoms, okay? And then the son or the daughter or whoever will hopefully and lovingly say, okay, I remember, I remember our agreement, right? So you always bring it back to the agreement. So it's not a blame or a shame. It is just like, remember how we agreed? Gentle, loving reminders. Okay. I think that's really all I want to say to y'all today. I know it is a challenging time and I know we struggle with, um, you know, working with the kids at home. Just, just remember that your relationship, your healthful uh, communication dynamic is so much more important than anything else that these kids will learn in school. This is it, right? Like learning to set boundaries, maintain those boundaries, honor those boundaries. This is primary to everything that they will do in their entire life. So get this down and the education will come. It, I promise. And things will come back to normal in, in no time. I promise. It's, 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 it's temporal, right? We have, we have, there's a beginning and an end to this, right? I've homeschooled for years and there's always the end of the school year. We always have the summer and it's always a relief for everybody. So that all being said, Good luck with the teens and young adults. I know it's a challenge. Set the boundaries that take care of you. So if they're not practicing what we find is um, the health, healthful uh, physical distancing, um, they're terming it social distancing, but you know, physical distance, then you set a boundary that, that allows you to take care of you, okay? And with your, your relationships, remember patience goes a long way. Um, taking space when you need it, stepping back, going inward and then being able to express yourself more clearly post that inward gaze that's 
so useful. So meditate, um, even if that just looks like lying down for five minutes and just letting everything go, okay? And so much love to you all. Thanks for joining me here. Um, this is my um, inaugural YouTube video. And if you found some a support and uh, really appreciate what it is that I put out there today, you can certainly send a donation to me. Um, I'd love to um, hear from you with some likes or some uh, sub subscriptions. Love, love for you to share this. So get it out there. Um, I think this can really help a lot of people right now and it's applicable always, right? So uh, feel free to donate if you'd like uh, to uh, my Venmo account. That's cater underscore Santa Cruz or PayPal. That's Kate Jane Robbins at gmail.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will look forward to seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.